<laughs> well, I know a little bit about something about that. I get, a, you know, I get, you know, I get a little, uh, like, uh, let's say, uh, punch drunk sleepy or an air where we're doing Titans radio, to, you know, to 1230 at night. I don't even know how many people were listening, but it was fun. And a lot of, you know, people calling in and excited about the, the big time victory there and the King and crew and everybody else, man, it was a fun time over at the stadium, man. I hadn't seen it like that since, uh, back in the day. So, man, that was exciting with a little more entertainment with the lighting and rocking. I mean, the crowd was, you know, even though there was some Bills fans, there was a lot of them, the Titans fans drowned them out. So, great support for the team, and they pulled it off with a great stop there by Big Jeff. So, that was that was pretty cool. What an exciting game back and forth. And then to win it. Uh, so, that that's always great. I saw this, and I'm trying to find who to source it to. That was the biggest crowd in Nissan Stadium history? Yeah, that's what they said. I think they said it bigger than the 99. I think it's about a two or 300 uh, people extra. 69-419, the official the attendance. Okay, and here's Jim Wyatt with mm-hmm. that number. Set a new record for a Titans game at Nissan Stadium, which opened in 1999. The previous high was 69-363 against New England on November 11th, 2018. I wonder what, in 1999, what, what game was it? Well, no, the stadium just opened in 99. Oh, so 2018 right. was the previous high. Oh. Not 99, which I think all of us would have said, okay, it would have been sometime in 1999 when it was new. Maybe there's a couple more seats in a box or something now because you still have to count the seats from somewhere. They have to be there from somewhere. But I think they added some seats uh, <laughs> when they remodeled, Like, I, but I'm not sure exactly how that whole process worked. It might have been... Uh, Maybe what a handful of years ago. Remember wow. when they they made it more accessible for uh, handicapped, and uh, I think they added some seats there at the same time. But I'm, I'm not sure on that. I'm sure somebody over there at the brass could tell us the, how they added seats, or well, they just let more people in. Maybe they did. <laughs> maybe they did. I, I can tell you this from from having to remodel an arena. It's one of my many many jobs in my college time. Okay. The OSHA guys come in, whatever OSHA stands for, NASA, SCUBA, OSHA. Okay. They're the people who make sure everybody has an oh, equal oh, place to sit. I thought that's scuba dives. It, well, no, they're <laughs> not scuba. <laughs> so there's probably some OSHA for scuba. But if you – sort of like if you buy an old house, it may have some things that aren't up to code. And okay. as long as they're not up to code and you don't touch them, then sometimes they just let it ride. But once you start to mess with things, then everything has to be modernized. Right. I think that's what was going on. So I'm walking around with this guy, and he's like, "Um, so what do you want to do? I said, we want to put in new seats. And he said, well, let's look at your handicap seating situation. And we had, we felt like we always had good, good options. And we'd never had a complaint. I mean, we're, we were very conscious of anybody who wanted to come to our games. We wanted them to have a good place to sit. So we had to build all these platforms and things. So we lost some seats. And the other thing was this. We lost seats on every row in the stadium because the guy said people are bigger now than they've ever been. The human butt size is bigger. <laughs> so seats are I bigger. I we were going there. The human butt size is bigger. This oh. is per, like, the, so, the inspector. So, so people's butts are bigger. That's no different than the athletes are bigger yes. than they were back then. Butts, oh, too. Okay, yeah, so that makes sense, though. Yeah, athletes bigger, butts bigger. It's all bigger. Back in the day. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's what she said. So we lost seats on every row, so that's why I'm thinking, boy, the Titans have put new seats in that place. That's interesting because we lost seats. But anyway, uh, maybe like you said, they just sold some extra tickets. Everybody got their money's worth last night. It was an unbelievable game, 34-31. They, they essentially went it on what looked like a goal line stand but was a couple of yards. Somebody corrected me just – attacked me on Twitter this morning saying how dumb because I had retweeted something that said it was a goal line stand. I didn't even say it. I said fourth well, down. Well, well, let's get technicality because you can get clarity for me. What is actually a goal line stand? Like, where is the, it has to be on the inch line? I guess or so. Or the one yard line? That's a great question. I, or, some guy or can told it be me, in the two or the three? Wouldn't you say two or three is close enough? I would definitely would have said that that's a goal line stand. Yes. Yeah. Well, they were they were trying to get inches, right? That's all they needed to get. Was yeah, a few they only needed a first, first down, down, which is what. Well, they needed inches for first down. Same but concept. A, but they needed two yards for a touchdown. Right. Correct. But they're going for the first down to win the game, right? <laughs> it's the same thing. It's a goal line stand. Right. Yeah. I I, I think that's a real technical. There were so few seconds been, left. To me, that's being as uh, Jay Martin Ramon would say, petty. petty. <laughs> 
Yeah, that, that come on. Really? <laughs> we going to get that? T- what? Here's the other thing people are fighting about. This I saw this fight. You saw the fight? I saw this a word fight because oh. everybody fights on oh. social media. Oh. They oh. word oh. fight. The quarterback slipped, so they really didn't defend him. He slipped. Huh? It's a real thing. Oh, he slipped. He never even had traction. What's to defend? He slipped because Big Jeff was right there pushing him to the ground. Well, yeah, he, he slipped because he felt the pressure of his lineman in front of him, and he <laughs> slipped, and then he, he couldn't get up. So I fall in, and I can't get up. Yeah, and you got tagged. So sure you're done. Yeah, so what a great play. I mean, man. It, it, you know, people don't understand how – impressive of a play that is and when i say that i'm talking about you know it's not like you know a receiver jumping up making a one hand catch this is comparable or you know some db jumping sure. up over the top of somebody making a play or what have you uh i remember first thing comes to mind like when nate washington jumped over the back of that guy in, in nissan stadium and caught that ball to push another human being backwards and pancake them on their back to waste 300 something pounds of a man who is trying to stop you and run force against you, and you do that, that is a remarkable play. And I think you heard it in Coach Mack and, and Mike Keith calling it there the excitement. It, it took uh, you know, Coach Mack to uh go out of character and and, and to say some things he may get fined for. Right? Do you have that uh Lucas? Of what Coach Mack actually said. Not yes, not yes, hell yes. <laughs> yeah, because he knows how hard that is to do. Yeah. And, and you know what? We may be spoiled a little bit because we've seen goal line stands a lot here in Nashville. I think that's probably like the third one. It was pretty more. It might be more than that. I, you know, but man, that you can recall. I remember the Chargers one. Remember that was the coming out party for Big yeah. Jeff. Mm-hmm. He had just kind of come back from yeah. his injury at that point. Yeah, but I'm talking about the Chargers back when. Uh, Lights out was out there. Lights out, guys. Lights out. Yeah, he out. got like yeah. So there, there's been a lot of them, man. That that that's just a man. And to that was like the game winner, man. That's that's like a walk off home run. I mean, that was that was special, man. Uh, you gotta gotta be excited if you're a Titans fan. Just watching the team, I really was impressed actually with the the play calling on pretty much both sides. You can be ticky tacky uh, with some of the calls, uh, especially early on for the offense. I think it was more the players. Uh, on offense, uh, probably press and try to make you know things happen without letting it just come you come to form uh, and happen on its own. But yeah, they kind of let uh, old Mister Taney time do five step drop there in the second half instead of the three step drop. They said, "Guess what? The heck with if we could protect it, we about to let loose." So I, I really, I really kind of felt like they were in a nice little rhythm. Now, did they complete all the balls and all those things? No, but it looked like okay. It made a lot of sense. All the things that they were doing, especially the second half offensively and defensively, you know, they changed some things up. Some of the things, I, not to my liking, but it actually can cause confusion and make you hold on to the ball a little bit longer right. uh, for that split second, and then the pressure was getting there. So, yeah, man, it was it was just great to see them play like that and then to actually win it because all the odds were against them. They were dinking and dunking them all the way down. People, said, oh, they could have called something, done something. I, really hard to say what you should have done you wanted them to earn it somebody came up and made a big play hooker and jackson on the you know the stop to make them have to go for it four and fourth down and then big jeff so man a great complimentary game from all uh special teams and the trick plays that were tried uh which is you know typical of rabel though (laughs) i mean i you know what he's more perturbed that it didn't work than that he actually did it because it it should have worked yeah people missed their blocks and that's why Rodgers, I think it was Rodgers, who was that, that was threw the ball. He, he, that guy was supposed to be blocked by two people. Mm-hmm. So there's no way that should, he should have been able to make a good throw. So, yeah, that was a well-designed, and that was all for da 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 do 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 Yeah, Monday night when they showed out. And the, and the fans, the fans showed out, and it was rocking. Yeah, so that was, that was pretty cool. Proud to be here. Uh, a Titan fan, that's for sure. You said all week, you've said this all season, you said this last season, Mike Vrabel does his best coaching when when everything seems lost and his back against the wall. Yeah. Well, and the players, seem over to play, and over. The, the players seem to do it too, though. But, yes, he does too. I mean, he pulls rabbits out of his hat, man. He, he does. I mean, man, those were some well-designed. And, I, you know, you could give Vrabel the credit. You give the special team. Sure. He still had to say, hey, man, let's design something. Let, let's, what, what, can we, what can we get on him? Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yeah, man, 
That was, that was pretty cool. I, I just wish it would have worked because the Bills, uh, what is it, Buffalo Bills uh, Twitter handle actually tweeted out, that finally a forward pass <laughs> call. Yeah, so that was hilarious, too. So they had a sense of humor in, in their two chartered planes here that they brought uh, there by the ownership group, as we understand it. Yeah, Mickey. So, uh, yeah, Bill's Mafia was in full effect. Still didn't see, I didn't see any tables breaking, so. Yeah, tables are safe in the city. So that, Bars that was had good. a good weekend selling all, you know. Oh, yeah, they drank up all the, the brew here. Chicken wings, they came and ate it all, drank it all, and they went home with an L. You just can't beat it. It doesn't get any better than that. And on Monday night, too, the only game in, oh, gosh, the only football game in the world, and they won that game like they did. It was fantastic. And I think now we can say this. Will Derrick Henry, the king, get his just due and be mentioned in the conversation of MVP? I mean, if he, if he's not in the top ten now, I, I don't know what else he could actually do. Yeah, I don't either. Uh, and I, 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 I'm going to just give it a broad ten. But I, I would say higher than that. But, yeah, he's he has to be. It's, it's, it's guys, there's nobody like him. I mean, you, you he's hitting all these marks and then making it look like it's easy. Yeah. Like, he really is. I'm like, wow, man, it's, he's, he's – we all know he's special, but I think we, we get used to that's going to happen every game, and it, it really isn't. I mean, but he keeps doing it. Sure. So he's, he's fast enough to run away from everybody, and he's big enough to run over everybody. No, he's 21.8 fast. Well, that's the fastest run of his career, right? Yeah, that's what they say. <laughs> I think they might have said that's the fastest run by a running back this year so far. And this is a guy with 2,000 yards on his legs last year who's on the pace for more than that this year on those legs, yeah. and those legs are still well, carrying I mean, him 21 think, to miles be fair, he, his first couple of years he didn't have a lot of, you know – Tread on those tires. I mean, they weren't running a lot because we had DeMarco Murray. Sure. Who was it's like really 1,200 like, yards, I think, in his first two, two years, years total. Right. So he was kind of – he was splitting time or really not even that, mm-hmm. really. So now he's catching up. Uh, so we shall see. But, man, tip of the cap. And, by the way, speaking since we're talking about Derrick Henry before we go to break is, um, I think his contract is not guaranteed next year. I think we need to guarantee that. Go ahead. And yeah, just- he's got two more years left on that – I think it was fifty million. I may be off of some numbers here. No, so it's, that was, wanna... it's about fifty million. Yeah. Yeah. I think they need to guarantee next year. Sorry, Charlie. Like right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If I was his agent. Yeah. Hey man, y'all go ahead and put it in writing that my man's gonna get this no matter what. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, he's doing some things that is off the it's like arts. It's him and Jim Brown and OJ Simpson every week. And I know a lot of but you just know. they're going back to the helmet day when we didn't have a grill. I mean, they, that's right. how far back they got to go. And I know a bunch of you really don't know much about OJ as a ball player, but more as a <laughs> – as a. Well, I didn't know him as a ball player either. I only knew him about the guy running through the airport. With oh, the commercials. Yeah, he was Hurts rental car. Yeah, yeah, because I, 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 didn't, I didn't watch – I didn't see him a lot. And I was a running back. I was a big running back fan, being that I was a running back that time. So, you, uh, I was uh, – OJ was big for his time and was faster than everybody. He was big for his time, six one, six two, probably, which was big for a running back at that time. And he was as fast as everybody, or faster than anybody. Lucas is telling us we got to yeah, go fast. Run, All like right, Colt in Memphis is on. Colt, if you will hold, we'll go straight to the Mark Spain Real Estate Hotline when we come back. We've got to do our game ball awards. We are not giving away balls, but we give. Away. We had a bunch of calls last week. I want game balls. Well, you know what? Actually, make sure the callers call in, and they have somebody they want to give the game balls to, too. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So you can join that as well. We'll give ours in this hour. We want to hear from you, Coach Mack, in hour number two. Phone lines open, 615-737-1045. It's Blaine and Mickey on 104.5 The Zone. The Titans showed the country what they can do by taking care of the Bills on Monday Night Football. Allen tried to sneak. He got nothing, or so it appeared. They got it! They got it! They did it! They did it! Yes! Not yes! Not yes! Hell yes! Talk about it all day today on your home for Titans football. 104.5 The Zone. Brian Kelly, the home.
the Tennessee Titans last night. Big Jeff just with a heroic play. <laughs> And uh, it was fun to watch, and it was a, a great ending. And uh, it's a, a young player, Big Jeff, just continuing to take those strides. Colton Memphis has been on the Mark Spain Real Estate Hotline. He called in in the first segment. I think this is the very play that he's been wanting to talk about. Colt, thanks for checking in. Hey, guys. So, uh, yeah, it's the, the, the last play there, we're all hyped up because it was a great play by our Titans. But, and maybe they're talking about it on Bill's radio, but I, I was shocked. I turned around to my buddy at, at the game. Like, there, there's no way they're they're actually going to go for this, right? I mean, surely they've got one timeout. There's 20 seconds left. You know, I thought they were going to go hard count and, and try to draw them off. But, you know, even even if they pick up the first down, you know, there's, you know, 15 seconds left. They're probably going to use their timeout. Maybe, you know, they, they try a pass play or something. But it just seems like the – you know the the strategy there. The, the and of course, I guess hindsight's twenty twenty, but just didn't really seem to be gaining a whole lot there. Because if you pick up the first down, you're still probably not going to have a three yard quarterback sneak for a touchdown. So just the strategy of it just didn't seem to make a ton of sense. And McDermott, you know, he's done a great job, but I, I just seems pretty crazy. I, I was shocked that they actually went for it. And I feel like that's not really being talked about. I'm, I don't know if it's coaching malpractice, but getting close to it, at least at my eyes. Yeah, Cole, this is interesting because Vrabel makes decisions and we, you know, like not going for it for, for two at the end of the Jets game. And it's like, gosh, if you somehow, because they, they kicked the extra point, they went to overtime and ultimately the, the Jets got them. So the question always is, when is the right time to try to end the game? And I think of like Sam Pittman in Arkansas playing Ole Miss and they just went for two and tried to end the game. They didn't get it. Ole Miss won that game. Um, Sean McDermott. And it is interesting because they were, what, three yards or so from the end zone. They could have gotten a first down, and he's right. He's There's no way he's probably going to – it looked like a straight up just trying to get the first down play. It's a lot to unpack from that game, but, Blaine, we've had this discussion some this year because it seems to keep coming up. When do you try to just end the game and get the heck out of there, and when do you think, let's play for overtime? Well, I think from the college point of view, I think – old school thinking is exactly he's on point. Mm -hmm. And I think when analytics became part of the game now and helps to make decisions and, mm -hmm. and actually, you know, you kind of refer to it most times unless you have a good feel for how the game is going and you go outside of that. I think that's why they went for it. And actually, if you're on the road and you're the road team, I would have done the same thing. Now, they also, you know, uh, <laughs> They had done this earlier in the game, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the quarterback's I think two other times. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think the Titans was like, okay, well, we're going to stun inside and they, we're going to come get this. And they stemmed they into stemmed. the gaps. Mm -hmm. yep. And they were doing this during the game every time and make them, they wanted to make them false start. Mm -hmm. It's a little trick, you know, that it, actually I've seen uh, Belichick do that. Mm -hmm. But a lot of teams do it. And, uh, you know, I like it because then it also confuses their blocking schemes. And at the last minute, they have to make adjustments. You have to be on the same page. And you don't have time to communicate if you're an offensive lineman. Right. Uh, and he slipped, but it was because of the penetration. Uh, so, you know, unfortunately, they didn't get it. Uh, but I, I would have gone forward, too, as well. At home, too. I mean, uh, you know, on, on the, the road. road. On the road. If I'm at home, I might have kicked it. Say, let's live with our crowd. And uh, let's see if we can win it. We have the, the better quarterback. So, and, you know, he's six, what, five, 250. You know, he's not a little guy. No. This guy, he's just a heck of a player. He's he's the king with the arm. Right. That's what he is. <laughs> with That's a, a cannon. A, a, yeah. King with a cannon. Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah, I, I, wasn't, I wasn't opposed to it. But I'm sure, you know, hindsight's 20, 20 and everybody's going to critique him. That's why they lost the game. But uh, I, don't, I don't think McDermott, who was actually, uh, he was the assistant uh, linebackers coach when I was in Philadelphia. Ron Rivera was the linebackers coach. Jeez. And Leslie Frazier was the DB coach. So Every one of those people were head coaches. Andy yeah. Reid coaching tree. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Harbaugh with special teams. <laughs> special teams, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I, yeah, I spoke to <laughs> yeah, yeah, Coach uh, Frazier uh, yesterday before the game. But we, we didn't talk a lot about the strategy of how, you know, uh, they contained him before this last game. But uh, he, he felt pretty confident going to the game that uh, had a great shot of doing decent uh, – uh, against the King, and maybe not hold him to, you know, 60 yards, but they thought they'd hold him out of 100. They were giving up 78 rush yards per game, and he got 76 on one carry. Yeah, Just amazing. Broke, I think that really broke their back. Yeah. yeah. As well as I, I think they, you know, the Titans won the game earlier uh, with them holding them to field goals, the Bills, the first couple times. Sure. That was, that was big. Kind of like a lot of the Jets.
Uh, exactly. That's what it seemed like to me. You think, gosh, if you're, you're one touchdown away from being ahead in this game, and then they did that. They finally got going. I think Lucas had a stat. Let's see if we got the same one, because I got one this morning from ESPN. What have you got on the Bills? This is from Next Gen Stats. Okay. Yeah, the Next Bills, Gen is good stuff. The Bills' decision to go for it on fourth and inches was unequivocally the optimal call, according to the Next Gen Stats decision guide. Conversion probability, 75%. Win probability, 63% if you go for it, 42% if you hit the field goal. See, ESPN does win probability, and it was a little closer. It was 48.9% if you go for it, 47.5% if you kick the field goal. So even yours, which was a much greater number, and even the smaller number, the even the, the stats, every, the, the predictability, the analytics said, Go ahead and, and go for this. That's what you're supposed to do. And that's not to say you're supposed to do that all the time. Oh, right. But it, Read it gives the room. you uh, – Good coaches, great coaches also go by the feel of the game. Yeah. And they were moving the ball. And so in your mind, you say, how the heck can we not get an inch? And we have a 6'5", you know, 40, 50, you know, quarterback. Or whatever he is, I think he was, what, 245 or something. But, yeah. And so the probability is that you, yeah, if he just lays down, he's going to get a half an inch. He's going to get more than that. Seriously. Just yeah. to fall mm -hmm. forward as big as he is. Nobody can predict that. He The probability of him slipping. <laughs> Nobody can, or, or his offensive tackle Dawkins getting drove back. He's yeah. listed at six five two thirty. Or, or, or in some people's mind, it was Taylor Lewan. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh! <laughs> Chris Broussard. Chris Broussard has this rant. <laughs> now, now I'm not a national guy, but d do they write that stuff up for him, and then somebody else botch that, or did he actually do that on his own? Well, it had to be because if he had watched the game, he would have seen. I mean, how long it took to get Lawan carted off. And, right. uh, yeah, somebody fed him. Uh, how does nobody come over his ear, though, and just say, no, stop, stop it? That's not what happened. Yeah, Chris Broussard, by the way. If, Maybe that was a setup. Uh, uh, national guy <laughs> talking about this game and how uh, the backup for Taylor Lawan, who had been knocked out for the Bills, that he was a Bill. Yeah. He had been knocked out of the game earlier, and the Bills had his backup in. Oh, this okay, here's the Chris and, and Broussard audio. Misinformed. Happened on the play. Yes, Josh Allen Smith or Josh Allen slipped, but it got blown up on the left side because of the pressure of Tennessee. I wonder why. Could it be because ten, uh, Buffalo's Pro Bowl left tackle Taylor Lewan was injured? If he's there, maybe that doesn't happen, but he's out. So you got a second stringer that Josh Allen's trying to go behind, and you see he got destroyed. Dawkins, whoever that is. All right, so that's the problem. You're not good in the red zone overall. It happened on the play. Yes, Josh Allen Smith. Mm. Um, what's funny is one of the Buffalo writers had quote tweeted this and essentially said, the guy who was playing at that time has been the starter yeah, there Dawkins. for four years. Right. Like he's, been, he's a longtime starter. <laughs> he's not a backup. He's not just some guy who isn't whatever Dawkins. He's the regular starter. He said it's so matter of fact, like, oh, I'm really going to get him with this one. He botched that. Oh. Yeah, that, that, was, that was horrible in all, all sense of the matter. <laughs> I mean, we all miss something sometime. But yeah, that's, yeah, but not, that's not egregious. That, Taylor Wan is a pro bowl and sometimes all yeah. pro caliber player who had been carried off on a stretcher that you would have noticed if you'd watched any of the game. Then he went on to talk about the big game from Bill's running back, Derrick Henry. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no. uh, uh, we, got, we got a bunch of people who want to talk to us. Mark Spain, Real Estate Hotline. Let's take some of these calls. Is some game I know balls? Joey's got game balls. Uh, Rue in Lebanon, though, has been on. Let's, let's get Rue on here who wants to talk about, I believe, the, uh, the non-human running back that the Titans have. Hey, Rue. To you, Blaine, I had met you a long time ago when, when you had a – I wouldn't really call him an understudy. His name was Donald Driver. I met you, too. It was a great experience. And I uh, actually talked to you several times. Uh, but yeah, receiver for Derek Henry is a man child. We all know this. Yeah. And I, I want to change it up just for a second. Let me ask you a question as far as – I know you all have covered this already. And I just recently joined the show. What does it look like, the outlook, I want to ask you to as far as the Kansas City Chiefs game coming up? I know it's a short week. Mm -hmm. We've had some injuries. But we've also had some guys step up into some key roles. And I'm going to hang up and listen to you. Again, Blaine, I appreciate you. Mickey, keep doing it. Right, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate you. Uh, man, I, I think uh, just looking at the depth 
of where we're at. Like even some guys that aren't even hurt, let's say that played injured and had a serious injury, Bud Dupree. Now he may not have been a huge factor in the game, but can his body respond quick enough to get the swelling down so he can play and contribute and be a factor yeah. and continue to kind of grow on this last game mm-hmm. coming off an ACL in December. Right. So that's why I said I might have held him out just so because I knew it was a short week. Uh, but cornerback is going to be, you know, something they're going to be looking into. Uh, you know, a vet. I, I would prefer a veteran guy. I would bring up the the. I think it's Jones is number twenty three. Who I like. I know. I know. Uh, we liked I, him. Now, I'm he not talking about preseason. as a starter, but right. naturally in a role like Borders. Right. Borders now has moved up, and I like him in his role where if somebody goes down, he's right there, and you know that that's right where he should be. Uh, actually, I was really fascinated with Jackson and how well he played. Uh, I was always interested in see his top end speed, but man. He feels real comfortable out there, even going against Diggs. When they show zoomed in and went on some of the one-on-ones, I, I like what I saw. I got to make sure he's healthy. He went out of the game, came back in the game. That don't mean he won't be sore and can't practice all week. Right. Uh, you know, I, I saw him tape his ankle. I don't know if it was an ankle or chin or what it may have been. but So I would probably look into a veteran. Got to, You know, you heard Vrabel talk about it. You know, what, what has he been doing? Has he been on somebody's practice squad? Has he been practicing? Is he in shape? Can he pick up our system? You know, because this is a guy that you're going to implement. He's going to be in a backup role and could play pretty quick if he has some experience. And there's some guys out there. You, you may even want to look into, you know, giving up a late pick for someone who's, you know, like third on the roster. Uh, it was, it's a guy. It's a couple guys out there. It's not playing, I think, that are, you know, potentially trade-type guys. Sure. Uh, and no big names, by the way. I'm not right. talking about any big names. But just quality young players who've been in the league that, you know, maybe need a new start, but teams are holding on to them because they, they know in case of injuries, they may need them. Uh, so, yeah, I'm concerned more about that. Oh, you know, O line, one more guy go down. Uh oh. Uh, you know, you got a Lawan situation. Uh, he's in concussion protocol. So, that, you know, in a short week, you just never know about those things. Some are different than others. Uh, so, and then we got you know, old Julio. With the hammy. So it just keeps stacking up. Next man up mentality is what they say, but I say next opportunity to showcase your skills. And that's what it is. Sure. Yeah. I, hey. Oh hey, I may I got my opportunity with somebody injured my rookie year. Yep. So I know exactly. So you've been prepping and preparing all this time, waiting for opportunity. And they start talking to me during the game. I said, Hey, ho ho. I prepared. I'm about to go have fun now. Let me let me let me just play football. Let's go. Don't make it to rocket scientists because rocket scientists move a lot faster than on that field. So let's go. <laughs> they they can't afford to be stingy with late round draft picks. I don't think at this point. It, it, you you've got to have bodies. I mean, mm-hmm. Fulton is on IR as you said. Farley's gone. Torn ACL like again. That one caught me. I, I didn't really see all of that. I don't know if it is it the same one he tore before. Remember, I brought that up before he had tore his ACL. Nobody even talked about that. Not, not that I know of. So now it's been shoulder. It's been back. He said back surgery. Now nice. this is two, two ACLs, ACLs. Yeah. and we don't know if it's the same one or not. So it's either one on both or two on one. Yeah. I mean this this is not trending well for this film. Mm-mm. Let's uh, let's give away some game balls. We'll get to ours, but we got Joey, we got Luke, we also got Gary, who I think just wants to talk Titans. Hey, man, it's post Titans. It's it's the day after the game. We want to take all your Titans calls today. Joey is up next, though. Joey, who gets your game ball or game balls from Monday Night Football? So I got a couple of them, but first I want to, you know, I'm surprised y'all hadn't said this yet, but you know, last night, you know, Henry moved into sec- tied second all all time uh, with uh, rushing touchdowns with Eddie George. At 64, and I think he only they only trail uh, uh, Earl Campbell, and he has 72. So just think about that one. Yeah. But my game balls, uh, my first one to the offensive line for having a clean sheet last night. You know, keep Tannehill mm-hmm. upright, sure letting did. him do what he do he does. My second one goes to KB. You know, that was an amazing interception uh, right there when he got it. And, you know, got us down with the return into the red zone. Uh-huh. And my third game ball. It goes to Coach Mack and Mike Keith, you know, because without them, I wouldn't be able to watch the game like I used to because I hear them and I can see it up top. And I'm just – I'm forever grateful for them and the, the station for what y'all do every – all the time. 
Joey, thank you, man. We're thankful to people like you who appreciate the station and hang out with us on here every day and every night. I disagree with those game balls. Yeah, those are good ones. I like him working in Mike and Matt. Cause yeah, that was, that was really cool. That was fantastic <laughs> last night. Uh, Luke in Nashville. Oh, this says bills, but not balls. But let's get Luke anyway. What's going on, Luke? Uh, yeah, no, I just wanted to, to point out a potentially worrisome pattern. Um, mm-hmm. Really excited about the, the win last night. But uh, wondering if we'll see them again in the playoffs. You know, last year we had the – Big win against the Ravens, then lost the first round the year before. Huge win against the Chiefs. I was at that game. Lost to them in the AFC Championship. The year before, we didn't make the playoffs, but we trounced the Patriots. And then they go and win the Super Bowl. So I want to get your guys' thoughts about, you know, potentially seeing them again in the playoffs. And uh, But it was a great win. Super exciting. Awesome. Uh, I'll hang up and listen. Thanks. Luke, thank you. I remember this. Uh, I remember this team. I got a friend who played on it back in 99 and they beat the same team twice in the regular season. And then son of a gun, they had to play those rascals again in the playoffs and they found a way to beat them. That was the 99 Tennessee Titans with my friend Blaine Bishop. I think you know him. (laughs) (laughs) And guess what? I would have bet that we could not have beat them three times. That's how much respect I have for them. I I know they, they still are bitter about it all and everything. Uh, but man, they, they were a super talented team, and they brought the best out of us. Sure uh, did, you know. So yeah, I, I'm, I'm yeah, I'm, I'm still perturbed that uh, Jeff Fisher thought that that was our home field because he was getting them riled up. And I'm like, hey man, you're not out here running around chasing Jimmy Smith and tackling Fred Taylor, bro. Come on, Keenan McCardell. Yeah, just chill out on that. Yeah, hopefully it'll be ours. But let's not let's not let the rabbit out, out the bag now. <laughs> nah. Who was that. their Who was their big tight end? The big tight end, Brady. Kyle Brady. Kyle Brady. Whoa. Yeah, he was a giant. Yes, he was. He was a giant to me. <laughs> so they had some guys, man. They did. Yeah, they they, they offense. They, they were pretty tough to stop and let alone Barcelli and Searcy. Yeah. These guys were they were they were mean. They were nasty. They were athletic. Uh, that I, yeah, that that was tough to do. I mean, yeah. We just matched up well. We had we had their number. No different than the Ravens had our number. Mm-hmm. Yeah, pretty much. That was it. Well, and it's interesting the caller's point though that you see it, maybe you see these teams, but that's just when you get to the upper echelon of the NFL, you're occasionally going to see these teams in the regular season, and then you're always going to see one of them in the playoffs. So it, it may be the same team again, and that's just by gosh the hard thing to do. But to get to the Super Bowl, you have to do next to impossible things, mm-hmm. and it would be something like beat the Bills twice in yeah. a season. For me personally, as a, as a player though, I've always liked playing teams that I knew or we played against at least one time during the regular season because I knew exactly what the scouting report was on the guys that I've matched up against. So that made me feel ultimately comfortable uh, against my, you know, in my personal matchups in the game. It's Blaine and Mickey, 104.5 The Zone. Gary in the borough uh, is on. He is up next. Gary, hold on. We'll get straight to you. You want to join him on the Mark Spain Real Estate Hotline, 615-737-1045. We will give our game balls when we come back right here on the Blaine and Mickey Show. The Titans have their sights set on Andy Reid's AFC champion, Kansas City Chiefs. Mike Keith and Coach Mack have the call. Did he get it? Yes, he did. Kickoff is Sunday at noon on your flagship for Titans Radio, 104.5 The Zone.
Two fullbacks. Yeah. And so blasting game with his versatility. Yeah. You can go and do some things like that. But I just – they were throwing him the ball. Yeah, two catches, 13 yards. Yep. So I, I, I still don't feel like he was overworked, though. That's crazy, isn't it? That's that's insane for me to he say. He only had 20 carries. We're like, wow, he's – and we were watching him after Gabe and, doing and those interviews. Catches. He wasn't even sweating. Yeah, he yeah, he looked like oh, everything's all good. <laughs> Man, I would have been, in, I would have put my entire body neck down into the cold tub. Yeah, well, maybe he did immediately. Maybe after he the did. game. Maybe that's what he did. Oh well, he might have. Yeah, they, they. I don't know if it could fit. You know him. He'd have to be a deep cold tub to yeah. get the king in there. If they have it in the facility, but he he could fit it there. He could force himself in there. Oh, they got fancy stuff now, Blaine. This isn't like you in a plastic tub of ice like it used to be. They got all no, kinds I of fancy stuff. It wasn't a plastic tub when I was there. They have individual ice tubs. They still have them. Yeah, yeah. They, they, everybody has. I mean, they don't have a huge, uh, big ice tub. Oh it's, no, the little ones. Yeah, yeah everybody they, they, has their the own steel ones. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. they still. That's what they use after the game. I think they've got like the super cold like pool over there now. They got all kinds of stuff. Really? At yes. The, at the, at the facility. I think they have I a mean, cold at the stadium. A, oh, no, not stadium facility. Oh no, I know they do at the at the facility. At the stadium, but, but no, it's they, tons of ice. He's not at the ice. facility. Right. We're at the stadium. He just got to get in his own individual tub yeah, of ice. Yeah, yeah. I, I only did that a couple times immediately after the game. Yeah. Well, yeah. he he needs to just do it after every game. Go ahead and get that oh, information I'm sure he does. knocked down. Yeah. But he acts like he just uh you know just woke up just. Good day. I had a nice little jog today right. at, at the office. Yeah, he's not human. Uh, yeah, Gary he is not. Gary in the borough will get you, and then Gilbert in Austin, Texas. But first, Gary, what's going on, Gary? Thanks for checking in to Blaine and Mickey. Hey, guys. You're awfully quiet there. Um, what's going on? Just wanted to say two things. One, you know, I'm going to – didn't say it before. I throw a game ball out to Julio just for that catch. I mean, if I threw him a game ball and it bounced off eight people, he's still catching. Yeah, that. that was funny. He was but, laughing about that, too. And um, the other thing, too, they keep, they keep talking about that call and, you know, should have gone for the tie or whatever. They made a point on, I think it was on NFL Network last night, that the reason that he had to go for it is the last six times that the Titans had the ball, they scored. Four touchdowns, two field goals. You going to give another chance on a coin flip? Yeah, absolutely. Real good point. If you see that the other team, you can't stop them. Uh, Titans offense is actually up to number eight in scoring offense in the NFL. Mm. They've just been creeping up, creeping up. Yeah. And one thing I can say about the offense, I want to address this. Seems like the offense operates better with one superstar. Could be my perception, but it, it just seems like it, it functions better and everybody's on the same page mm-hmm. now, i could be wrong but that's just how it seems to me and i don't know if they really know how to utilize julio and his skill set i think they kind of run their offense and he has a certain skill set that you know that he's better at and they got to figure out what that is now he has to be available right for the, i mean you don't want to be just in games but it's at practice too so uh it's just kind of interesting that i I'm, I'm starting to see that and i'm hoping i'm wrong so we shall see. Hopefully he'll be available, Julio and A.J. Brown, both the next game, and then we shall get to see uh, a little bit more. Because really they only played the Seahawks game, and that's really in the first game. Yeah, they spent very little time on the field together. Yeah. Uh, Mike Vrabel today asked about Julio. He said basically he'll be evaluated day by day. No update other than that. Uh, let's get Gilbert all the way from Austin, Texas. Man, love Austin, Texas. Gilbert, thanks for calling Blaine and Mickey. Yeah, Austin. Hey, guys, uh, love the show. Listen to it every day. Thank you. Um, my game ball is actually to the kicking game because it was actually a non-factor, two of mm-hmm. two field goals, four or four extra points. Yeah. And we all know as Titans fans, you know, kicking has not have always been our strength, mm-hmm. but oh. very happy when you have to worry about that last night. Yeah. Hey, Great call because that was going to be my special team game ball was to Randy. I have a gut bullet. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yep. Now, how you like me now? Because we're making assumptions and assume that if he would have missed one of those extra points, guess what? And it's happened. They're going to kick field goal and win yeah. the game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, see, so uh, that, that he gets the game ball. I, I like the effort on some of the gadget plays that, but, you know, they didn't work. But, yeah, that, that he's my game ball. So I'm implement my game balls, but that was mine on special teams. Well, and they almost gave back that game ball on the kick return, but uh, luckily, it went, luckily it went back. And they replayed it. He did actually hold them. Yeah. So I was interested to see if it was kind of a one that, eh, nah, he held him. 
that guy wasn't going to make the play, but, you know, the, the guy's blocking. He doesn't know where the returner is at. Right. Mm-hmm. He was on that side. So, yeah, they got him. Lucas, we got a minute here. Uh, game balls from you, and then what, you you just gave special team. You I got, special you team. got yeah, offense, defense. I'm going to give Johnny Townsend some love, too. A couple punts, yeah. averaged 53 yards, had a 63-yarder. Yeah. You didn't notice right. him, so. Yes. Uh, we're, <laughs> we're not talking about him. him. Yes. You know, they, yeah. they, they did, a good, did job. a good job. Kevin Byard continues his bounce-back season. Huge interception and a nice return after it. Autry tipped it. Yeah. Uh, and offensively, A.J. Autry. Brown, his version of the flu game. He had the tip of the cap to it on his Instagram <laughs> story, too, photoshopping his face over MJ leaning on Pippen, who had Henry <laughs> photoshopped <laughs> over Pippen. That's what he is? Yeah, he oh, posted my. it. Oh, my. I thought so. And then he threw Chipotle game. under the bus yeah, after the Yeah, the burrito game. games, it's oh, going to be known. Man. All right, you got special teams hit, man. Who else you got? Uh, you know, we, we've been hitting them over the head, at least the fan base has. And I'm, I'm going to go with the OC and the DC. Oh. Yes. Okay. I'm going coaches. I thought they did a good job. They start to get in the rhythm, uh, especially the second half there on offense. So, yeah, I thought uh, Bowen and, and Downing did a pretty solid guy, job. And as well as, as uh, Lucas said, Townsend, I, I, I really, man, you, you value those kickers until they mess up. So, yeah, let's give them give them their props. Mm-hmm. And Bullock. Mm-hmm. So Bullock, mine for special teams. Uh, he made all of his kicks. Uh, four extra points, two field goals. Like Blaine said, we needed every one of those points last night if you wanted to see the Titans get that win. Defense, I went with Big Jeff just because – uh, five tackles, a sack, a tackle for loss, two quarterback hits, and just a play Ooh. at the end. Oh, you got Landry and, uh, and, and Kevin Byer. Landry had two sacks. I know. I'm go- I'm going big Jeff. Jeff Grande, as he's, he's known. Jeff I know. This large was, Jeff. That's when it's, it's getting good, when you, you have numerous guys. When you have to fight from. over who's gets yeah. your game ball. Mm-hmm. And on offense, I'm going way out of left field. N-W-I, Nick Westbrook Aquina. He had three catches in the game, all on the last drive, and yeah. he pancaked the dude on the on Henry the, touchdown. Henry Long, you're right. Woo! And his key was, I mean, his block was very key in that play all the way because that guy had his hand out there, and he pancaked him. Pancaked him. Out. That was awesome. I was like, ooh, that, you get paid the big bucks right there. Oh, my bad. You're not making the big bucks. But that's how you get to the big bucks. You got to start showing you can block. That dude, that's he good. just keeps hanging around. Yeah. He gets opportunities. He makes yeah. the most of them. I Julio still like the way out. he catches the ball, though. It, it looks <laughs> uncomfortable. Oh, it, you know what he looks like? He looks like a DB catch. Like it's you got to catch it away. From, yeah, that it, it, inconsistency there. I'm interested to see if he can continue this catch the ball. But he is. He's catching them, so you got to give him props. You know, Julio on that last he's drive, and that dude went out there and caught three balls. Yeah, he's comfortable because he's been out there. Sure is. No showing assistant. trust. People don't understand when the coaching staff shows trust in you, even if you make a boo boo. Guess what? Your confidence just skyrockets. Yep. Our uh, first hour has skyrocketed away from us. Hour number two coming up next, including a visit from Coach Mack in about 25 minutes. It's Blaine and Mickey, 104.5 The Zone. Buck Rising is at every Titans game and gives it to you straight each and every week. This is an onion. We're going to peel it back layer by layer, piece by piece. The Buck Rising Show, tomorrow from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. on 104.5 The Zone.
Titans thing ever to go out there and, and find a way to win a game like this. And Blaine, you said this all week, and I pointed this out in the first hour. You've said this for quite some time. This team under Mike Vrabel, Mike Vrabel himself, the team playing for him, they seem to respond in these type of situations where the, you know, the national media picks games and everybody says they're going to lose. And they go out and they win a game like that. And once again, last night, it wasn't always pretty, but they found a way. The offense, I mean, they scored 34 points. They're up to number eight in scoring offense. So even though they punted the first two times and then never punted again, then Tannehill threw that interception. The offense found its groove after that. Yeah. Put points on the board. Uh, the defense bent. They didn't break while the Bills get two touchdowns, I think, in five red zone opportunities. Yeah. I think those yeah, were the those numbers. Mm -hmm. And what's funny is – early in the game. It, the only things that people could find about the Bills were maybe they'd have some issues with the offensive line and they weren't great in the red zone. That was it. Like, that was the two things that I heard anywhere or could find anywhere that anybody said if the Bills had any weaknesses. And the Titans, they drove up and down the field. But to their credit, they stiffened in the red zone. Well, their weakness wasn't it was their defense. is not a weakness, so they – the, the offense of the Titans played really well, as well as a weakness to me. When you watch them, there's this flawed team, which makes me interested to see how far they go in the playoffs. They can't run the football. Can't, yeah. They're not a running they, – they, they're not – they don't have that guy, you know, a, you know, a running back. you got to have more than just uh, some okay running backs. you got to have a dude. You know, where where is that guy who's a threat? Nobody's making me put eight men in the box to stop, stop their running game. You can't just live and die by, by – Josh Allen's arm the whole entire game. They have three legitimate receivers, Beasley, Sanders, Diggs. Those guys are good. You know, they got Knox from here. So, you know, they just need a, a, a bigger threat to me at running back. Right? And then defensively, hey, Titans offense uh, really got after them. So, yeah, got after uh, the Bills defense. So, yeah, it's an exciting time. Rocking stadium, lights. Lickering, all the oh, it was just electric in the uh, stadium, and uh, you know it's exciting to be a Titans fan to come away with a win the way they won it with Big Jeff on the goal line stand. <laughs> yeah, you, you said people were, were giving you a hard time. That wasn't a goal line. Wait, it was on a two yard line, a three yard line, like, yeah. th like three yard line. And somebody was, I had just retweeted <laughs> it and a tweet literally from the league about the goal line stand of the Titans. And I had somebody who had a very long lecture. And well, this is where the issues lie, and not just with your, que the, you know, the you know Twitter handle person who's, who's questioning you, and a lot of people say the same thing. This is the referees do the same thing. The exact same thing. They literally take the rules and apply it. And knowing if you played the sport or if you understand it, that's not exactly how it's supposed to be applied. So goal line doesn't mean you're on the inch line. Right. Yeah, that does not mean that. A goal line stands to me is saying anything within the five-yard line is a goal line stand. I agree. If it's fourth down on the four-yard line, three-yard line, two-yard line, one-yard line, inch line, that's a goal line stand. You know, but some people are going to take it literally. It has to be on the goal line. See? The goal line. No, I, I agree with you. It's it's NFL football. These are huge people. If they're inside the five-yard line, that's close enough to the goal line to yeah. count. Uh, the Titans do get the win last night. A lot of guys left the game injured. Taylor the one, uh, Mike Vrabel mm -hmm. said today uh, he looks to be headed to concussion protocol. That's what he said about the one. Chris Jackson, who kind of left and came and went during the game, uh, Julio Jones, hamstring. Who I thought played really well. Yeah. By the way, uh, and, and who can play cornerback? He can play safety. He plays nickel. He's he's okay. a super versatile guy on the oh, team. Oh man, those guys go, oh, they go a long way, uh, and play a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, Julio yeah. will be evaluated day to day. Uh, McNichols had an issue last night and ultimately couldn't get on the field. Caleb Farley and Cam Batson both tore ACLs, and I've got somebody hollering at me in the Zone TV chat saying we're not paying attention to him. Every screen is out in the studio that we can actually see with the Zone TV chat. Every one of them. There's a screen that we have to walk over to see, but we have... I don't have a screen in front of me, so I don't see anything. So I leave it up to you, so I always get a chance to blame you. So, uh, thank you. <laughs> so, RBI Sports, we have or, no screen. Or, or Lucas. Lucas has all the screens up there. So, for what it's worth, RBI Sports, we are not ignoring you. We cannot see you at all. There's dead screens everywhere around me. He says... Let's take it for what it's worth. This is a gentleman who's in, in, enjoying the show, apparently angrily, about the Zone TV chat and says he heard it's Caleb Farley's other leg, not the, oh. 
Because you pointed this out. People were talking about his back. Usually, like, this guy tore his ACL in college, too. So he's saying it's other ACL, so it wouldn't be the same one twice. It would be each one once. So the reason I'm why that, would have, that was concerning for me is that you have an ACL, and usually your body starts adjusting on its own, and then all of a sudden now you're having back issues and you have back surgery twice, regardless if you should have got it on all of, you know the first time, uh, and then now you go back and another ACL. That that's tough. Uh, that's that's tough. And I know he's young. Yeah, uh, he can recover. Uh, but it, it's definitely going to make you start having doubts if you're the Titans brass. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those ACLs are, we can ask our man Dyson, the doctor. Those ACLs, he said they led to all kind of other injuries because he was compensating the whole time. Meanwhile, he said you need to also, which, you know, everyone knows now, is you, know, you need to be strengthening everything else mm -hmm. and not just the injury. But do praise another Keep your body guy. in balance and make right. sure it's functioning together. Athletes do it all the time. The body's compensating for, you know, a sprained ankle. Then you start putting more weight on your right knee if it's the left ankle or your right ankle. You know, you don't even realize it. And if you do that over a period of time, eventually your body breaks. It breaks down. Yeah, Bud Dupree, another guy, tore his ACL in December of last year. Which He's got to navigate this deal, too. Which is pretty remarkable for him to play that first game. Mm -hmm. I told you I would have waited and fight against it. I know he wanted to play, and he felt like he could play, mm -hmm. but – the body tells you, and I'm sure that thing swole up like a balloon just on a guess, and then he didn't play for a couple of weeks. And, and, you know, he played. He actually you know, he wasn't a big factor. I think he had a tip ball, but he wasn't a major factor. But he's building confidence. we got to look at it like this in the future down the road. So I'm interested to see if he can respond and play this Sunday on a short week. Mm -hmm. uh, that will be the telling of the tape of where we're going with his knee or where they have to rest him another week to get him, you know, two weeks through. Come back and play in the next John game. Simon inactive last night, but certainly John Simon, John oh, Simon the, well outside, yeah. Yeah, the, the way down the line, back up outside linebacker. But obviously, if Dupree wouldn't play, I would imagine that would mean you'd see a guy like John Simon again. Mm -hmm. uh, Mike in Clarksville, squeeze in one phone call on the Mark Spain Real Estate Hotline. We got about a minute here or so. Mike, what's going on? Hey, not much, man. I just, I'm basically, man, been listening. I can't I really like you guys, especially after the game when we have one like that. But all, all the entire uh, 104.5, really. Yeah. But anyhow, I hadn't heard anybody mention that. I don't know who number 97. I'm, I'm going to assume he's a defensive end for the Buffalo. Bills. Yeah, he got straight on but, by McKean. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the King pushed him five yards backwards, and I guarantee you he's got 50 pounds on the King. <laughs> yeah, And he, he shoved him backwards. And so, I mean, it's like everything you see all that. He shoulders somebody, he puts your face in the ground. But this big monster, he came up against and he shoved him backwards. I thought it was beautiful. Uh, it, it was. I agree. Yeah, that that was pretty. And it was going towards the Bill Sila. I know the exact plays because it stood out because he had a chance to tackle the king in the backfield. And the king was like, no can do, uh, fella, young fella. I'm the king. Dropped him like a sack of potatoes. Yeah. Still ended up being like a two-yard loss. Yes, it, yeah, yeah, greatest it's, negative two-yard run ever. Right. It would have been a six yards. It could have been a momentum changer, you know. Instead, he just, you know, ended up running out of bounds, still lost two yards. But it was right on the sideline. It People don't understand. That sends a notice to everybody on that sideline. And then when his tall presence and they get to see him, like right in their face, they go, oh, oh this guy's huge. This doesn't compute. Yeah, yeah, this, this guy's different. It's just like this lights just went out and start flickering like they are at the stadium. It's like a strobe light yeah, in here I, now. Yeah, I think we just had uh, LED lights uh, flickering in here, man, at the concert. Maybe you, you set that up like that. But it was it was fun to watch it, King, even uh, when he had uh, a negative play, when you see him just straight on other 300-pound human beings, like it's nothing. Yeah, pretty special. But, yeah, that was cool. It's always good when, it, when you win. But it was an exciting game, oh. back and forth. You know, naturally you want to win, but if they even lost, I, I would have been. I, I was, I was pretty impressed with the way the team is starting. They complimented all the offense, defense, special teams, and how they went, but they still were able to win and make a big play. We start to see potentially what this team could really look like if they could do this on a consistent basis. And last year, the offense got in a groove. They finished third in scoring. Like I said, they're up to eighth. If they can keep scoring points at this rate. Then we get back to, can the defense make the three stops a game? They need to win a game like against Kansas City or so. So it's fun to watch the evolution of it. Now they're injured. They're beat up. So it may take a while to get this roster back in its as full capacity as you can. But uh, 
Well, they played gutsy last night, and they got the win. Coach yeah. Mack. Yeah, so if they got some questions for Coach Mack, they can ask him that question because we may not ask him that. So here's the thing. Coach Mack loves to take caller questions. If you want to weigh in, he is next. We will let you ask questions. We will ask questions. 615-737-1045. Coach Dave McGinn is next on Blaine and Mickey. The Falls have a Saturday night SEC date with Alabama. And I know at least one person who's calling for an upset. Hey, yo, Falls fans, go Falls! Kickoff is Saturday at 6 on your home for the Falls and SEC. 104.5 The Zone.
had last night. Well, hey, first of all, thanks for having me on, guys. Uh, second of all, Blaine, thanks for just sending me a great picture of you and Les Frazier. That's two solid dudes right there in that picture. Let me <laughs> say that. And then the other thing is, guys, I'm completely organic when I'm doing the game. I've mm-hmm. got 36 years of coaching in me. I can't help it. You know, as I said, if Mike, if, if Rhett Bryan hadn't grabbed my belt, I was getting ready to jump out of the window and start <laughs> crowd surfing. It was absolutely outstanding. Um, that – that final play, um, final defensive stand by the Titans. First of all, they made an amazing play on third down to send it to fourth down. Let's talk about that play. Let's talk about that play that, that Hooker and his partners made on that, mm-hmm. that play. That third down play was a huge play. Because, look, first of all, and you guys understand this, and our listeners do too, because they've, they've seen the game. But, I'm, you know, when you watch Buffalo's take, that quarterback they have, Josh Allen, is an incredible athlete. And to be able to helicopter a six five dude and turn him sideways to keep him from making that was a huge play, Mickey, and I'm glad you brought that up. That was a gigantic play in a game that had a lot of gigantic plays. And I would imagine nobody who hit him over there was as big as he was, and they managed to stop him cold. Uh, no, it, that's why I say you're, you're helicoptering yeah. a six five two hundred forty pound dude that's in the air. That's not easy to do. It is not. And then, and then the next play, and Blaine pointed this out earlier, the Titans stemmed into the gaps, and he said they'd, they'd done that before um, and, and maybe trying to even get the Bills to jump. They didn't jump, but Big Jeff found himself in the right place at the right time. And, again, we're talking about force and humans going, you know, moving into each other. So Big Jeff, Coach, not only stopped a 300-plus-pound offensive lineman cold with one shoulder – he stopped the quarterback with the other, who, as you pointed out, is 6'5", 245. He did that on that play. Well, first of all, Blaine's 100% correct. And on the stem, and, and Blaine knows this, and, and, and let me t- I know this from years of coaching in this league. If you're gonna, you've got to sell out to stop a quarterback sneak in the National Football League. You've got to, you've got to sell out. You've got to sell out being able to, to squeeze it and stem it, just like what he said. And then your second-level people have to be able to sell out for the jump. And so Blaine's 100% right, but, but uh, Big Jeff had a, had a big game up to that point also, too. I mean, and that was – that stop, that stop down there. There are a lot of hard things about playing defense in the National Football League, especially nowadays, but that just becomes mono e mono down there. And that, that's why I got so excited about it, because I just know how hard it is to do for a defense. And Jeff, that reminded me a lot of Jarrell, coach. Jarrell always seemed to be able to get lower than anybody else in those situations. And the and and it would be a, a defensive stop and everybody would peel up and the guy on the bottom of the pile was Jarrell. It, Big Jeff got low. He got underneath his guy all the way down to where the quarterback was trying to slide in there. Just a phenomenal play, phenomenal technique, phenomenal effort, everything. Well, I mean, it's it, it's just a given. It's it's a mantra in the National Football League. When you're playing short yardage, low man wins, mm-hmm. and that's exactly right. But it, you have to be able to, first of all, have enough flexibility as a big man in your lower body to get that low. And then you have to be able to have enough power and the right kind of timing when you launch with both feet to still be able to stay viable if the play comes your way. And, and, and Big Jeff did it to perfection. Sure did. Coach Mack always brings some perfection to this show on Tuesdays. He's brought to you by Farm Bureau Health Plans. Need great health care coverage at an affordable price? Let Farm Bureau Health Plans coach you through it. They've got you covered. Coach Mack giving us the Mack attack. Yes, Coach Mack. I guess give us your overview of the game. And the team just looks so much different. And I guess I want you to explain why that is, if, if you believe that, and then what they did differently in this game compared to, I guess, the first, you know, four games. Well, games. going into it, you know, and, and, and I said this, you know, in, in several instances going into the game and then, you know, in the, in the pregame that Rhett and I and Amy do is that because the Titans had some elements back on offense, especially vertical elements, they had a chance to put a little more stress on Les Frazier's, on Les Frazier's uh, defense. I mean, that guys, when you're missing your, your, your components in, in an offense, especially your vertical, you know, components, and then plus when people are stacking the line and Les Frazier – you know, started stacking the line, not necessarily the solid fronts that we've seen, but what he started doing was moving, you know, Milano and Edmonds up and then bringing somebody off of the edge to try to stop Henry. Those play action, those, you know, those little, those little play action 
and 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 glance routes are those are those little those quick slants crossers to single coverage when you've got AJ Brown and you've got Julio those are combat catchers that can catch body on body that's big and when you don't have those guys all the time then you can do different things defensively so that made a big difference now Julio went out of the game but Westbrook Aquina stepped up you know in in that instance but when you're when you're missing some elements of an offense that has to have all elements working together, and we know the major element starts with with number twenty two back there, well then that helps. That was just what I thought. But going against their defense, unless Frazier has you know one of the best defenses in the league, not only because of the system that he runs, which is very solid, but also the fact that he knows how to call a game, and then you know they've got people, and so. To me, the back and forth in this game, there were two good teams in this game, and the Titans did it you know, as the game unfolded because of the injuries that they had without some more people, but they managed to do it. This team's got a lot of grit. You know, that's because the, that's because the head coach has a lot of grit, you know, and, and, and the general manager has, has brought people in here that, that have grit to play those kind of games. And, and Blaine, you were on a team like that when you were playing for Jeff Fisher, and you know that's something that you talk about constantly, constantly as a football team. No matter what happens, we're still in it. Mm-hmm. I thought they had some great ideas. Completely agree with that. With some of the, I'm going to call them trick plays. I don't know how you would phrase them. Even though they didn't work, what were your thoughts when you saw some of those plays? And, and I thought they executed well, just somebody you know didn't block or didn't do something, and it didn't work, and they had to make a bad throw on one of them. You talking about the Music City Miracle? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, I don't know if you want to call it Music City Miracle. That was on a what was the pump return? Was that the yes. pump return? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a little bit different. You no, know, well, here, here's you know, and I and I made the comment to Mike. I said that's about the same place on the field it happened, wasn't it? Yes, yes, it was. Was it? Where, where oh, it was? And then I I know that ESPN flew in this weekend. They flew Alan Lowry in from Florida to do that special with Jeff Fisher out of his farm in Kingston Springs before the game. They just taped that this weekend. And so, uh, you know, if they would have pulled that, if they would have, it's and butts, candy and nuts, right? <laughs> they would have pulled that off. I mean, it would have been a great talking point. And, you know, you know, a little bit of kudos to the Buffalo fans saying, that was a forward pass. Yeah, that was <laughs> hilarious, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. All right, on something, you know, really fun, but also, you know, this is part of playing in the National Football League in any football at any point. What were your thoughts when you first saw Taylor Lewan uh, go down and, and I guess getting carted off the, the field? Cause well, I've anytime they bring a the board in, it, it scares me to death. You know, I've just been doing this too long. I've been involved in, 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 in some things as a coach, I mean, where your heart just drops. And so, you know, the, the game is the game. The game's a violent game. Let's just say that. And no matter what happens, you can get, you can get hurt a lot of ways in, the, in this game. But anytime they bring the board in and put you up on the cart, there's got to be great, great concern. And so, you know, Im- immediately my mind goes to that because I know where the players' minds go to. I know where the coaches' minds go to. And, and I know where, look, I know where the players on the other team, their mind goes to, because this really is a fraternity. You know, it, it's a complete fraternity. I mean, it, it, you're, it, it's, it's vicious, vicious competition. But at the same time, you never want to see anybody injured really bad. And none of us, you know, have any medical degrees. But when we see the ring of cart and the board out, you start to get concerned. We're on with Coach Mack, giving us the Mack attack. Now, Coach, we're going to have some – you know, take some some callers here. So uh, yeah, let's go. If you if you can't hear them, uh, if, if my if my voice holds out, I'm about uh, my voice is is about to go. But guess what? <laughs> I'll take all of that for that kind of week. Hey man, for a night like last night, we'll all trade in a day or two of our voice. Uh, Rick yeah. Hendersonville, coach. I know he's got a question for you. Rick, say hello to Coach Dave McGinnis. Coach Mack, Rick, yeah, Rick. Hendersonville, and uh, my question for you with. The offensive line of Tennessee being injured, not being injured. Dennis Kelly is sitting there in Green Bay, and I don't think he's played a snap. He he left on waivers, which is fine, great. I think he loved it here in Tennessee. Have you, in your experience, ever seen a player that left on waivers sat on somebody's bench ever been traded for by the team that he left because i think it's a great opportunity for the titans if they could pick dennis kelly up 
for a sixth, seventh round pick? I, I'm asking your opinion. Yeah, well, I don't. I, he, first of all, you know, I'm, I'm not. I'm not sure. You know, if, if he, he's up there as a backup, he's on the active roster. I'm not sure. You know that they would. I mean, I don't know that they would. That they that they would give him up. Have I ever seen that happen before? Uh, you know, I can't recall the specific incident, but uh, I, I can't recall a specific incident. But not saying that that it that it couldn't happen. But I just don't, I don't know what the particulars are with what Green Bay thinks about it right now. You know, they may not be you know into it at all. Well, speaking of players, you know, I, I just saw uh, uh, Merciless from the, the Texans is available. Yeah, I think because I think they're kind of getting rid of some of the the veterans, and you know they're moving on because you know the season pretty much is uh, done with. They're moving with a different coach. Would that be some a pass rusher? You know, would that be somebody who, whose skill set kind of fits a little bit with? Uh, let alone you know, and Vrabel uh, to a certain extent, uh, they could just fit. I'm not asking about if would you trade for him. Would he fit the scheme and system? It's never. You know, too much to have some another pass rusher. Oh, he he fit the scheme absolutely. Can he play in the secondary? <laughs> well, there, there's some other guys out there too, but uh, you know, hey, I was just hey, pass rush makes the secondary uh, that much better. Yeah, I mean, he he could he could fit he could. I mean, Mike Vrabel knows him very well, Blaine. In all seriousness, I mean, he could he could fit into the he could fit into the system. And you know, you know better than anybody that the first thing that comes into mind when all of that goes around is what's the money, right? right. That's the first thing that that, mm. that that comes around. And then when you when you bring him in, you know, and, and you get a couple of guys that that are injured that are that there there's going to be spots, but could he fit in? You asked me your specific question was, could he fit into the system? And the answer to that is yes. Coach, we've got other callers. I know they want to talk Titans. So we'll, yeah, let's go. We'll incorporate them in as well. Jeremy and Nashville up next. Jeremy, say hello to coach Dave McGinnis. Hey coach. How you doing? Bro? Hi Jeremy. How are you? I'm good. sir. I just had a quick question. Uh, it goes along with the, some players that's out on the market. I see. I think it was like last week the Seahawks cut uh, cornerback Trey Flowers. I want to get your opinion on how you think he will fit in, and if that's somebody that the Titans should look at. And I thank you very much. You know, I haven't. Thank you for the call very much. I haven't studied Trey Flowers, and I'm not. You know, here's what I do, and, and I and I've tried to do this ever since I came back here. You know, five years ago to do broadcasting. Try to say when I say things, it, it's something that I have some concrete evidence on. I haven't studied Trey Flowers. In, in, you know, recently. So I don't know what the background is as far as to what his release was up there. He is a veteran corner that has played in this league. Now, where he is at this point in his career, I don't exactly know. And here's what I do know. I do know John Robinson and his people are going to be scouring a lot of looks right now just because of the number of injuries that they've had. But to answer your specific question, he's a veteran player, but I could not tell you right now where he is either health-wise or where he is performance-wise at this point in his career. Coach, we got Wes and Gallatin. Uh, yeah, Max, let's have, go. Having some fun here. Wes, tell uh, tell our friend Coach Mack hello. Hey, Coach, how you doing, gentlemen? You guys doing all right today? Yes, sir. Wes, doing great. Excellent. I apologize I interrupted. I had a couple quick questions for you. So, uh, first off, I wanted to ask about the defense last night. We've seen, you know, Harold Landry has obviously been, been pretty much great all year. We've seen some flashes of, of good times from uh, from Long and from Hooker. Last night, it kind of seemed like it was the first time it all came together at the same time. I wanted to see, first off, if you thought that was kind of, the, you know, the guys rising to the occasion or if it was, you know, with Bud Dupree coming back, you know, is it where, you know, now the pass rush is working better, so now Harold Landry can do more of his thing and, every, you know, everybody can kind of focus more on their specifics rather than having to make up for weaknesses. And also turning, looking at the future, you know, we're facing the Chiefs up next. Is this something we're going to be able to have a secondary that can withstand the Chiefs, or are we going to have to alter our game plan to make up for that that hole that we have right now with injuries out? Yeah, Wes, I think it, it helps. I mean, going back, you know, to, to, to the first question, you know, when, when – you know, Blaine was asking and Mickey were asking about the offense, you know, what, how they look like they could be on point because they got some players back. Well, I think getting getting Bud Dupree back, you know, up front help. And when the game started, they had a fairly, you know, uh, uh, healthy group back there in the secondary. You got a money hooker back. So you had your players back and you can never you, 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 you can you can never lessen the fact that when you have your best players back, you've got a chance to perform your best. That's just the way it works in the National Football League. So the answer to your first question is yes. I mean, they had some, 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 some guys back. 
Now, they had some guys start to drop off, so they had to make some adjustments. But initially, when that game started, that was about as healthy as they've been, you know, on defense and on offense, you know, to, to, to start a game this entire season. And it came at a good at a good time. Now, it, it was not at a good time to lose, you know, five or six players that we lost during the ball game. But to your question, yes, it helps. And I think Bud Dupree being back, you know, helped. The more good players you can have out there that can roll and can help, that was one of the strengths of Les Frazier's defense is going into this game is he has about seven or eight guys across that, that front four and that 4-3 defense that he can rotate in there. That helps. Yes, that, 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 that helps quite a bit. Coach, looks like we got one more caller. Dennis in Spring Hill will be our last caller for the segment. Dennis, thanks for calling Coach Mack. Hey, Coach, um, let me ask you something here about the Bills and their record. Uh, Of course, everybody's been saying how great they are and they're the best team in the league and this this and that, uh, which I admit they got a good team. I mean, there's no doubt about that. But who are their wins? Are you able to help me with who they've beaten outside of Kansas City that's a good team? Well, look, I, and that's, this is something that, that I know is, is, is debated, you know, outside of NFL team circles. But believe me, inside of NFL team circles, they beat NFL teams. That's who they've beaten. Yeah. Now, are some, teams, are some teams better than others because of where they are or who they have at, at, at major positions? But you, you can never, ever take an NFL team for granted, ever. That's just the way it is. Ask Blaine. He's sitting right there. He's been through it a lot of years. I definitely didn't I mean, do that. No, of course not. I mean, I mean, and everybody said Kansas ready. City's good. Don't they have a losing record? Yeah. But so we, exactly. we all do so know they, here, they have Mahomes. Here's, here's, yeah. here's my answer to that. I'll tell you who they've beaten. They've beaten the NFL team. Right. That's, I'm right there with you, Coach. Yeah, I, I could never give anybody any slack for any team that doesn't have a winning record. And even if they were 0-15, you better bring your best because you're capable of being beat on any given day in the Nash Football League because they have some elite players on their team. Amen to that, Blaine. Thank you. Mm-hmm. So where can everybody listen to you, Coach Mack? Where are you going to be at if your voice uh, survives? Well, we've got, you know, d- d- tonight we've got Mack talk for an hour. Rhett Bryan and I do, so I know we'll have that loaded with, with callers, which we absolutely love. And, and, and we'll, we'll go back over this game, which – you know, this was an event, wasn't it, guys? It was really an event. I mean, you know how Monday Night Football, you know, is supposed to be an event? Well, this lived up to an event. And uh, it, it was it was so fabulous. Uh, and we, we will go back over that, and we will give a preview of Kansas City because that's what I started doing. I got – I did uh, – I filled in for Coach Vrabel with – for his television show last night. We recorded it last night after the game uh, with Mike Keith. And uh, when I got home about 1.30, then uh, – Woke up about six this morning and started watching uh, Chiefs film. So anyway, we will go over what the Chiefs are going to present. So uh, hey, we've got another game in Nissan on Sunday, and uh, I hope they've got everything cleaned up and ready to go, which they will be. But uh, I saw two great games in that stadium this weekend. Saturday, I went to to Eddie George's game. You know, Tennessee State and Tennessee Tech at eighty one in overtime. I mean, I was I was excited for him too. And uh, you could tell by the call last night, I was a little bit excited about that one, too. Well, lastly, before we let you go, can number 22 finally get in the conversation of MVP? Yes. So why was it before? Well, we're we're witnessing history, guys. Mm -hmm. We're we're witnessing history. And here's the other thing about it. Again, lifetime defensive coach in this league. You're a lifetime defensive player. When you when you get ready to, to play, what's everybody? Who are you concentrating on all week in the meetings and on the practice field with, with how you set your defense up? Number twenty two, yeah. and what does he continue to do? And plus, what did they say that he ran last night? The fastest player that that has the fastest those speeds that come from the satellite in the National Football League this year. Yes. That's insane. Yeah, twenty one point eight zero. Jeez. I mean, I, I don't know how fast a cheetah runs, but they <laughs> give them a race. <laughs> and they're not as big as him either. Hey, Coach, we'll be listening to Mac talk tonight. Uh, go get you. I think uh, Mike Keith always says, uh, like fresh pineapple. Maybe that's good for your voice. So you can you can consult with the vod. He'll get you going, so you'll be able to make. Oh, it he, he he's he's taking care of me for for going on five years now. He <laughs> said that's what he said. Fresh pineapple, green tea with honey in it. I'm doing it all. Sounds good, Coach. Thanks for giving us some of your time today. 
Thanks, guys. Always appreciate, appreciate being it. on with you guys. See yes, you. Yes, sir. Uh, Coach Mack. Uh, when we come back, you want to hit us with one final phone call? Do it. Mark Spain Real Estate Hotline, 615-737-1045. We'll also hear from Big Jeff on the fourth down and how all that went down. Big Jeff next. Blaine and Mickey. The 3HL with Brett Doherty, Don Davenport, and Ron Slay. Oh, my. Your most informative and entertaining option for sports on your drive home. Oh, my gosh. Today, starting at 3 on 104.5 The Zone.
But first, Sean in Kentucky will join us on the Mark Spain Real Estate Hotline. Hey, Sean. Hey, fellas. How y'all doing today? Doing, doing great. great. Doing great. Good, Good, man. Hey, I was just curious. It seems like we always play to the potential of the team that we're playing. It's been like this for the last couple of years, mm-hmm. and maybe Blaine can answer it. Uh, we play, you know, a team that ain't so good, and we're on the same level as them. We play a team that's supposed to be way better than us, and we end up beating them. Do you know why we continue to do this? <laughs> you know, it's funny you ask that because it's frustrating to me. Uh, and what I like to see is teams that play consistent. That doesn't mean you're going to win the games that you're supposed to win, but you want to see some consistency. What I see is the team is very inconsistent in their actual play. I don't even think it really matters who the opponent is whether they're supposedly supposed to be good because of their record. Well, in the National Football League, if you don't come out there focused and play your best to your ability every week, you can't get beat regardless of the record because they all have skilled players that can beat you. Uh, and that's where the, you know, Miss Norman, I remember I used to explain this to my wife all the time. He said, oh, yeah, playing this team and only won two games. No, this team is really good. If I had her mindset going into the game, guess what? Oh, we're going to beat them. So then guess what? That equates to you're not studying your opponent as well. You're not practicing hard. You're not working on the little things. So all that leads up to, oh, okay, we barely beat them or we lost to a team we were supposed to beat. And it's because everybody is the best right. in the world. And so if you don't play your best every game, that I mean, it doesn't guarantee you're going to win. And just think now you take that individually, each individual person on each team at their position. And, uh, and, and I always looked at it as, as individual matchups. Mm-hmm. You have individual matchups and you say, I'm not going to win them all. That's, that's, you, you, that's just not going to happen. But can I win more than he does? And that's what I would do when I would go into games. So if I'm going against a guy 10 times, I need to win seven or eight of those so I can let him know that I'm for real. And that's really what happens. And I just think inconsistency in preparation, injuries play a part in it. How healthy are you? Some Everybody knows everybody's hurt once the season starts. I mean, you are banged up. You're living every play like it's the last play in the world. There's nothing like it. So you are never healthy. So how healthy can you get, I think, leads to that inconsistency as well. Uh, and you're fighting through that injury and trying to navigate and play your best through all of that. And it all really is just mental toughness once you're out there on the field because nobody cares if you got a nicked up ankle and you're only 85%. Right. Nobody cares that, oh man, he got beat for that touchdown. He looked horrible. Well, yeah, well, I, I wasn't, I couldn't, I couldn't jump as high in this game because I was still nursing an injury. So all those things play a factor. Uh, but it, it is frustrating watching them because. My game and most guys' games that are really elite players, it's not about all your athletic ability. It's about how consistent can you play at the highest level every game. You want to build your body up. If the king really told you all the things that he really does to get to Sunday, you'd be amazed. Yeah, you wouldn't believe Mm -hmm. it. And to get so he peaks on Sunday to play his best. And so uh, they just talk about what they do for him at practice, but he's doing a lot of other things on his own, rest assured. Big Jeff peaked on the last play of the game uh, for the Titans' defense on Sunday. He got asked about it, and he kind of broke things down. This is Jeffrey Simmons after the game Monday, not Sunday. This was Big Jeff after the game last night. I mean, we you know we know what they kind of do, especially on the um, mm-hmm. in that type of situation, even if they outside, I mean, outside of the goal, I mean, red zone or – Right there on the goal line, we know if the quarterback come on um, center like that, we anticipate um, sneak, and that was play I thought that was gonna run. And they did, so I mean, I just I was inside of the tackle, you know, got my hands on the tackle, quarterback right there, he tried to get low, just put my um, big arms around, him, he couldn't move, so his, he was short. So it was a great play from everybody, you know, everybody was in their gaps. Was there any get a little bit of an uh, extra. Was short and it was game over. No, I knew he was short because um, I, like I said, that was my gap. Um, you know, I knew. I was probably um, like a yard in the backfield or whatever it may be. Um, So I knew it was short. What was the talk like in the huddle before that? That was Big Jeff uh, after the game. And it's funny. He talked about, Blaine, you mentioned this earlier. They stemmed before the ball. They stemmed into the gaps, anticipating the play. Great call by the coaching staff. Let's start there. Very great. Designed. Mm -hmm. before Josh Allen even went under center. They did all that while he was still standing behind the center. And it looked like they had that plan going into the game but they had already run somewhat similar they were running it throughout the game but particularly when they ran the quarterback sneak and one thing I love hearing 
that he said. He says, I thought they would run that play. And then he said, preparation. He talked about preparation. He didn't say the word preparation. Then he said, I did my job. See, those are all things that equates. Then we're giving you opportunity to make a play, and he made it. Yep. Uh, and sometimes you make them, and sometimes, what I just say, you win more than your individual matchups. You, in particular, probably, if that's across the board about all your players, win the game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's what he did. And he, preparation. I, I love when I hear D. Lyman talk like that, mm-hmm. because usually they're just kind of just, you know, watching film, just trying to figure out when they get an opportunity to beat their guy and what moves they're going to do and what moves they're trying to set up. But he was talking about scheme system and this is what they've been doing to us. And then if I did my job, great call by the coaches, I'll make a big time play and I'll put my, what do you say? My big arms around him.